Model Engineering for Beginners Part 22 Machining a Crankshaft in the Lathe I need to make a new crankshaft for a very old, incomplete, Bassett Loke Tangy style engine and in this clip you can see the original crankshaft at the right hand side which is unserviceable I'm not going to waste too much time speaking about the job, it's straight on with the job I've fitted a piece of 3 8 of an inch stainless steel bar into the chuck and as usual I'm using the smaller of my two lathes to demonstrate this principle this lathe is a very old Boxford AUD. First of all I'm going to demonstrate how not to do it. The piece of steel bar is fitted into the chuck and not much of it is sticking out. I took a couple of facing cuts across the front of the steel bar using the knife tool that's in the tool post currently. Originally I was going to make quite a small centre hole. The centre drill that I originally used was a bit small so I used the next size up. This is a 3 16 of an inch diameter centre drill and as you can see it's made a nice centre in the work. In this part of the clip I've slackened off the chuck jaws and I'm pulling out the piece of bar to the same length as the original crankshaft. With the live centre fitted in the tailstock I'm supporting the bar using the centre hole that I've just drilled. I'm applying some lubricant to the bar. This is steam oil and it's good for this job because it's very thick and gloopy and it doesn't spin off. And by thick and gloopy, which is not really a technical term, I really mean that the oil has a very high viscosity. It's very thick and gloopy. And as you can see, even though this cutting tool is a bit past its best, it's getting a very good finish on the work. Using the original crankshaft, I set the micrometer to the same diameter. And the idea is to turn down this piece of bar to exactly the same diameter as the original crankshaft, and it should fit perfectly into the bearings in their existing condition. When doing a job like this you have to be very careful not to turn it under size because if you do that then the part is scrap. So before turning all the way down the bar I'm checking with the micrometer frequently and I'm even using one of the bearings to make sure that it fits. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this is the wrong way to do it and look what happens when I remove the live centre. As you can see the entire thing spins out of true. I'm not happy with this so I'm starting again. Because I drilled the centre hole at the beginning of the job, with the part not sticking out of the chuck very much, when I fitted the live centre into this hole and pulled the work out of the chuck to a longer length, it was only the live centre that was holding it in an accurate position. So this is take two. Once again, I don't have much of the bar sticking out from the chuck and I'm facing across the front. But this time, I'm not going to drill the centre hole with the bar in this position. I'm going to pull the piece of bar out of the chuck to the length it's going to be and only when the bar's at full length will I drill the centre hole after which I will fit the live centre and the rest of the process is pretty similar to what you've just seen. As before I've applied some steam oil to lubricate the work and off we go. So why should there be a difference drilling the centre hole near the chuck to drilling the centre hole further away from the chuck? Assuming that the lathe is accurate, what's going on? Well, it's the bar really. I don't think the bar is very accurate. Had I have used silver steel, which is ground to an accurate dimension all the way down, then it would probably be okay. But then again, it would be a pointless exercise using a piece of ground silver steel and turning the outside diameter. This is a piece of stainless steel that I found in my box of bits of stainless steel. In this clip, I'm checking the bar with a micrometer and it needs a tiny little bit more taking off it. Once again, for this final cut, I'm applying some more oil. As you can see, the finish really is good. And once again, as I said earlier, this is not a new lathe tool. Really, I was being a bit lazy. I should have changed the tip for a new one, but this one seems to be working okay. When turning shafts like this in the lathe, you have to be very careful because the heat from the friction can distort the work. Commercial soluble oil or lathe coolant is a good idea to keep the work cool. But with the application of the steam oil, coupled with the very fine cuts, this is not hot at all. In this clip, I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper to polish up the work. Time for a quick health and safety notice. This is the way to do it when sanding in the lathe. I'm pulling the sandpaper in a direction away from the rotating parts. So has it been successful? Well, yes, it fits in the bearings perfectly. And it's exactly the same diameter as the original crankshaft. And here is the new crankshaft through the bearings supporting the flywheel. If I reassemble the engine, I think it'll be okay like this, but instead I decided to do it a different way. I used a hand reamer to ream out the holes in both the bearings and the flywheel. 
The original sizes of these bearings was a worn metric value. But now, after using the hand reamer, the dimensions are 3 eighths of an inch in both of the bearings on the engine and the hole through the centre of the flywheel. And now when I fit a new piece of stainless steel, from which I will cut the crankshaft, it's a perfect fit in both the bearings and through the centre of the flywheel. All I need to do now, after cutting the piece of stainless steel to length using my bandsaw, is fit it in a collet. This size of collet and collet chuck is the ER40 system. And here you see me tightening the ring on the outer part of the collet that holds it tightly against the work. What I need to do now is turn down the other end of the piece of stainless steel bar down to quarter of an inch to accept the crank web that I made earlier. If you'd like to see more details about how to make this crankshaft, please have a look at the series called Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine. I've turned the end of the bar down to a quarter of an inch in diameter and it's now a perfect fit for the crank web that I made. To fix this brass crank web to the crankshaft, I'm using some Loctite 603, which is a retaining compound. Here I'm applying some of the Loctite 603 to the crankshaft, and now I'm fitting the crank web on the end and spinning it to make sure it spreads the Loctite 603 evenly throughout the joint. I'm using the tailstock chuck to hold it firmly in place, and after about half an hour, the bond is strong enough to allow me to turn it. But because the diameter of the part of the shaft that goes into the crank web is only a quarter of an inch in diameter, I'm taking very fine cuts. And the last cut is finer than the rest, so I get a good finish on the work. Here's a good tip. Once you've turned the part down to the centre like this, bring the tool back the other way, without altering the setting. And that way you get an even better finish. Here I'm turning down the outside diameter. Testing the size with my digital caliper, even though it's not switched on, confirms that this is the same size as the original crank web. Here I'm very carefully using some emery cloth to just get rid of the sharp edges. Don't forget, a perfect 90 degree edge is very sharp indeed. I polished up the outer part with wet dry sandpaper followed by Scotch-Brite. The final part of the job, before I remove this from the chuck, is to just drill a centre hole in the middle of it. This is for appearance's sake only and finishes the job off. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to see this in more detail, please watch the series Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine, and this is from part 14. Here's a before and after shot. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.